How would you feel if every time you talk to somebody, you're talking to their back? Would you feel isolated, frustrated, disconnected? Well, that is the experience, a common experience, for the more than 36 million Americans and 362 million people globally who do not hear well. Chances are you will or have encountered a family member, friend, coworker, or customer that does not hear well. In personal relationships, hearing loss can cause misunderstandings, frustration, separation. In a work environment, hearing loss can cause loss of productivity, unintended poor customer service, and loss of sales. The impact of hearing loss is greatly underestimated and misunderstood. But it's tricky, isn't it? You can't always tell when somebody has a hearing loss. Me, it's obvious. I've got this accent <laughs> because there are sounds that I've never heard that I cannot pronounce. So people often ask, where are you from? <laughs> I used to playfully say, Germany. <laughs> but now, with my nifty cochlear implant and this metal disc glued to my skull, actually, I'm from Mars, and this is how I phone home. <laughs> All kidding aside, hearing loss is a very serious problem, especially if the person who has it is in denial. I was 45 years old, 45, sitting in a therapist's office. I was having problems in personal relationships, problems at work. I was having problems with substance abuse because I was trying to manage my anger and my depression. My therapist finally said, you know, Linnea, I think the root of all your problems is your hearing loss. That's ridiculous. I'm not deaf, I hear you. Yes, but I'm not sure you're connecting. Oh, I'm connecting. Well, all I ask is that you pay attention. Can you do that much for me? Oh, yeah, I'll do that much for you. <laughs> well, one of the first things I noticed was how much I don't understand what people are saying. I was compensating, pretending. I sure in heck wasn't connecting. So one of the first things I did was change my voicemail at work. I spent an inordinate amount of time trying to decipher those messages. So I changed my voicemail to instruct callers. Speak slowly and clearly and enunciate numbers. You are leaving a message for a hearing impaired person. Yes! First step towards accepting and supporting myself as a person with a hearing loss. Then I studying, started to recall awkward situations, dangerous situations because of my hearing loss. There was dear, wonderful, sweet Sonny, an elderly African-American man who actually thought I was a racist because I didn't answer him when he talked to me as I was passing him in the hall. I didn't hear him. And then there's skydiving. <laughs> this is long before tandem, where you jump with an experienced parachuter. This was just me, myself, and I, and a parachute. <laughs> Floating down to the ground, and all of a sudden, it seems like it's going too fast. <laughs> What's going? Where is everybody? Have I passed everybody? What is this box on my hip saying to me? Maybe it's telling me to open my spare parachute. Maybe. Oh, but if I'm wrong, I'll look like such an idiot. I don't know what, oh God, oh God. <sighs> well, I live to tell this story. 
But do you realize I was willing to die than be embarrassed of a misunderstanding because of my hearing loss? That was dangerous. I started to pay attention to questions people often would ask once they found out I had a hearing loss. Do you hear anything? Uh, yes, I'm not totally deaf. Do you read lips? <laughs> oh, yes. I do read lips. Do you know sign language? I do know sign language, but I save that for the rush hour on the freeways. <laughs> questions indicated to me that people wanted to connect, but they weren't sure how, and that there are misunderstandings and myths about hearing loss. Here are my three favorites. Lip reading. We can owe this myth to those spy movies and TV shows. James Bond sitting in a bar, reading on the lips of his adversary. Every gritty detail of how they're going to rob the Swiss bank. <laughs> myth. Hollywood myth. If relying solely on lips, the most skilled of lip readers can only get 40% of a conversation. Shouting. Shouting doesn't help. Let me demonstrate. Isn't the end? Isn't the end? Isn't the end? What's wrong with you? You heard me, right? But you didn't understand. There was no connection. Why? Because you heard chunks of sound. That's how we hear chunks of sound at home. My husband will be in another room, and he'll cough. Boop, sneeze, or make some other bodily noises, <laughs> and I'll poke my head in. What with that, honey? <laughs> we don't need volume. We need the components of speech that carve clarity into those chunks of sound. And those components of speech are the high frequencies that we don't hear no matter how loud you shout. Then there's hearing aids. Hearing aids never restore one to the hearing they once enjoyed. Never. In fact, if you see a person with a hearing aid, that's your clue to be a little more deliberate when you're talking to them. Well, how do I be more deliberate, Linnell? How does that work? Well, let me introduce you to my hearing loss CPR. Each letter in CPR stands for something you can do to facilitate connection with anybody, really, but especially if a person has a hearing loss. So let's examine the letters a little more closely. C stands for close, C-L-O-S-E. Have the person close to you. Three to five feet is perfect. A leading UCLA researcher, he's author of the book uh, Nonverbal Communication. He noticed in his studies that only 7%, 7% of communication connection occurs through words. 55% it's body language, the face, the eyes, and our beautiful lips. The rest is vocal variety and tonality. So when a person is close to you, they get a chance to read all of you and hear your voice. C also stands for content. It's important that the person you're talking to know what you're talking about right away. Have you had an experience of chatting with somebody or walking along with somebody and 
you're having a nice conversation and all of a sudden they just change the topic, something totally disconnected from what you were talking about. And you stop and you go, what? What, what are you talking about? Well, what's up with that? <laughs> you hear them, right? But there's no connection. Well, hearing is a function of the ears. Comprehension is a function of the brain. The brain needs to know the content in order to better interpret the sounds it's receiving. For somebody like me, who hears is the end, it doesn't mean anything until I know the person is talking about the Magic Kingdom and Mickey Mouse, and magically that becomes, oh, Disneyland. It's magic. P is for pause. The wonderful, beautiful, pregnant pause. Our brains need it to do the, it's magic. But the pauses, when interacting with someone with a hearing loss, is not between every word. It's between sentences and phrasing. At home, my husband often will have his back to me walking out the door. Honey, I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm picking up some milk. Uh, I'm making ice cream for dessert. What? Oh. <laughs> Honey, I am <laughs> going. Two. Now, I am not getting this. All I'm thinking about is getting my gun. <laughs> what would go down better is my sweet, adorable, darling wife. <laughs> I am going to the market. I'm picking up some milk. I'm making ice cream for dessert. Ooh, that connection was made. R stands for repeat and rephrase. Repeat and rephrase. If you have repeated yourself twice and the connection still isn't made, rephrase it. I was once at a restaurant, a new one, and a waiter came up, Madam Super Salad. And I'm like, because I thought he said super, S-U-P-E-R, salad. And that sounded divine. <laughs> yes. Super salad. And now I'm confused and looking to see if he's wearing hearing aids. <laughs> yes. Before he could shout the question a third time, my friend intervened. Linnea, 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 Linnea. The waiter is asking you if you'd like a bowl of soup or would you prefer a salad? Oh, oh I'll take that salad. Thanks. And if none of that works, take out your cell phone, write or type keywords or phrases, and let the person read it. I'll never forget. I was at a speaker event, and I was videotaping a bunch of speakers. One of the speakers hired his own film crew, professional film crew. And they erected this big, huge light that just illuminated the stage and their client. When their client was done speaking, and the next speaker was being introduced, one of the technician crew members came up to me. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. whispered even louder. We don't hear whispering no matter how loud you whisper. So I said to him, I'm sorry, I'm half deaf, and if this is important, you're going to need to write it down. I expected that would be the end of that conversation. It was not. He came back with his cell phone, and he had typed the words, I left the light on for you. My eyes welled up with tears. Not because he left the light on and <laughs> my video production was going to be better. I appreciated that. I appreciated that he turned on the light of connection with me. His message wasn't urgent, important. 
or even significant. But man, that connection was. Connection is so underrated. It's the cornerstone of personal and professional success. The amazing, remarkable Helen Keller, how she, how she could do this, I don't know. She was obviously very intelligent. Notice that of the two disabilities, blindness and deafness, deafness was far more complex. Blindness separates people from things. Deafness separates people from people. Hearing loss, being disconnected from conversations and being left out, it's frustrating, exhausting, and depressing. It's a real act of kindness to make a little bit of effort to connect with somebody who has a hearing loss. Try CPR, have them close, make sure they know the content of your conversation as soon as possible, pause between sentences or phrasing. If they don't get you after two repeats, rephrase it. And if none of that works, take out your cell phone, type or write it and let them read it. Those little as gratifying as seeing the light of connection go on in someone's eyes. And the big benefit, you get the joy of that connection too. I wish for all Connection. Thank you. <laughs>